Hey guys, this is Mr. Sal. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Today we're going to be going over uh, finding missing angles and triangles and with transversals. Finding um, angle measures in triangles and similar triangles, which is nice because angles are the easy part. Um, so far you should have learned that triangles and transversals have the following properties. Angles that lie in the same line are supplementary and have a common vertex, so they're straight angle pairs. Vertical angles have the same measure. If two lines are parallel and they are intersected by a transversal, then the corresponding angles at the points of intersection have the same measure. Given two lines, if the third line cuts through both lines so that corresponding angles are congruent, then the two lines are parallel. That was, for the most part, last time. The following bolded bullets are additional facts we should know. The sum of the interior angles of a triangle is a straight angle, so they all three should add up to 180 degrees. The sum of the interior angles of a quadrilateral is 360 degrees, so all four angles added together, 360 degrees. The measure of an exterior angle of a triangle is equal to the sum of the measures of the non-adjacent angles. Bam. Now that last one may have been a little confusing. What that means is if you got a triangle like these, and then we got a line that comes out of it, then this angle is the same as these two added together. Why? Because this angle plus the two purple ones is 180 degrees, and the green angle plus the red one is also 180 degrees. It just means yeah, that uh, that would be splitting it like this. In the following problem, solve for the missing ankles. Use the rules and properties above. Okay. All right, so here's what we know is if we took this ankle, the 35 degrees, the 45 degrees, and the X degrees, and added them up, we should get 180 degrees. So that means if we subtract the two. All right, so to figure out X, we need to take out the 45 degrees. And then we also need to take out the 35 degrees, right account. And the total will be however big that X ankle is. All right, the answer, as it turns out, is not 100. It should be labeled with degrees on this one, because X is the actual ankle right here. All right, so once again, the three ankles of this triangle, or any triangle, should add up to 180. So uh, if we get rid of this 57 degrees, we'll just take it out. But then we got this right angle right account. It didn't say it was 90 degrees in numbers, but the box shows that it is 90 degrees. So we're just going to take that out, and that should give us this x angle right account. So 33 degrees on the T's, and it is done. All right, on this one... We can see that this ankle is the same as this ankle. So it appears that we have some kind of isosceles triangle, which is good. And we can see this one right here is 30 degrees. In any case, they all add up to 180. Now you should remember this from seventh grade, but no one ever does. If we took those three ankles, the S, the S, and then the 30 degrees, if we added them all together, then we'd get the 180 right here. Yeah. Now, based on what we've learned already about uh, expressions and equations, so I'm going to combine the two S's to make two S's, and then that'll be plus 30. Then right about right account, we would subtract 30 uh, from both sides. And now right account, we'll divide both sides by 2. And S is 75 degrees. Yeah, so some people don't like this method, and that's okay. You don't have to use it. It is not required that you do. But if you do like it, just know that it is possible because this is a very common method that is taught in seventh grade. Well, at least here it is. All right, number four, we're going to do this a little bit more complicated than we should make it. But that's okay. Some people like it this way. So we got this 48-degree ankle. Then we also got the 24-degree right account. And what we could do then is solve for this ankle, which we can see is a straight ankle pair with this ankle. 
which is the one they really want us to find. So to solve for the green one, we're going to take the 180, subtract 48, and then we'll also subtract 24 as well. And that'll give us the green one right here. So that's 108 degrees right here. Nice obtuse ankle. But how does that help us? Well, if we combine it with that x degrees, it should be 180 degrees as well. So we're going to take 180 and subtract the 108. So that is 72 degrees, but that was just one method. We're going to show you guys the other method just so you're aware that one does exist. Yes, and that is the other method because that's uh, that last um, bullet point we talked about on that previous page is if we took the red ankle 48 degrees and added it to the 24 degrees, it is the same as this exterior ankle right here, X, which also is 72 degrees. So there's two different ways to find it. But some people don't recognize that you can add those two, even though we've gone over it and we may go over it many more times. Which is okay, because you can find the great ankle and then subtract that from 180 to find that X degrees ankle. Alright, so there's a lot of ankles on this one to solve for, but um, the good thing is we know how to solve for all of them, actually. Based on the rules we have already discovered, may be helpful for you guys to draw these. Um, some of you guys are looking at this as though it were two different triangles. There's actually three, three different triangles right account. So if it helps, I am going to separate them so that you can see what the heck is going on with the three triangles. All right, so this is the information that is given. <clears throat> but uh, in addition to this, it may also be helpful, it, well, when solving for x anyways, to look at it as though we're just in straight ankle pair like these. So that's 121 degrees. So to solve for x, what we would need to do, right here, is take 180 and subtract the 121. And that should give us x at 59 degrees. All right, as it turns out, that is going to help us because now we can see that this ankle right here is that 59 degrees, which is going to help us to solve for this Y ankle right here by taking 180 and subtracting the 64 and also subtracting the 59er. And that will give us this ankle Y right here. So that is 57 degrees for Y. <clears throat> and that is also this ankle right here in the big one at 57 degrees, which is Y. 57 degrees. Well, now that we know that one, solving for W, <clears throat> we're going to be using this big one right here. And we're going to take the 180, subtract the 57, and also the 90 degrees. <clears throat> and behold, 33 degrees, right? Right here. And, uh, I mean, just so we know that was that ankle right here. There was one more ankle that we could have solved for, not that it asked us to, but this one right here in orange, right? That would just be 90 minus 64, 26 degrees, if it were asked, because they may on the test. So there's one way we can solve for E. Well, kind of there's two ways, but um, the first way we would look at, hopefully, is to look at E and the 64 degree as a 180 degree because it's a straight line right, right there. So all we need to do is go in and take 180 minus 64, and that will give us the answer right here. Yeah, 116 degrees. So that's ankle E at 116 degree. Ankle F, we could either use the three ankles in the triangle to solve for F, or if you wanted to, you could use that uh, alternate exterior, whatever they, they called it, but uh, that means that we would take the 64 degrees, and we know that this 21 degree right here, plus ankle F, is 64. So we're just going to subtract 21 from that, if you want, and that would give us uh, 43 degrees. Now, yeah, just to confirm that, you could use the ankles of the triangle. So 
So we're going to take the 116, the 21, and we would subtract both of them out of the 180. And yeah, we'll still get 43 degrees right here. All right, good luck then. Oh, this one's scary. Okay. Well, because these, uh, this one right here, it's vertical. So this one, uh, this cell uh, R would also be 95 degrees. So that'd be 95. And and so, but these two together. So well, this right here should equal uh, 180 degrees. And so that is so uh so 180. Ah. Uh, subtract shoot uh, 154 and that equals um, 26 so Q is 26 degrees and when, then you should when you add up all uh, those ones uh, so so 26 plus 95 that equals <laughs> 1 uh, so that'd be one twenty one, and then, then you have to subtract that. So, uh, one, one twenty one. So you subtract that, and that would equal um. So that'd be. So that'd be fifty nine. So that means P would be 59 degrees okay and then then because 95 plus s that would equal a 180 so you do 180 and then you subtract uh, 95 which would equal 85 so these this, oh shoot well, I put it on there, but it doesn't really matter because this, these two right here are vertical, which means they're the same one. So yeah. That is correct. Good Thank job, you. Yep. Yeah. All right. So this one looks pretty different, but it is also extremely similar. Here's what we can know: is that this angle on the exterior of the triangle is the same as the 133 added to the 23 degrees. And since part of that is 110, we'll just have to take that off. So that means that... Now this is what it would look like as a, an equation. Some of you guys see that. Yes, 133 plus 23 is 156. So yeah, just to finish this off, to solve for B, we would subtract 110 from both sides. And we can see that ankle B, 46 degrees. Now that also helps us to find C, well... Kind of. Uh, if, if we wanted to, we could use that. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 180 for just the triangle. Then I'm going to subtract the two ankles that were given to us, 133 and the 23, which will give us ankle C. 24 degrees is C. Line P is parallel to line Q, and then they give us some of those measurements. All right, good luck. Hey, what's up, guys? It's your boy Matthew here. So we know that 67 and 3 are both vertical angles. We know that those are congruent. So we can go 3 is 67 degrees. Okay, and then right here, this is a supplementary angle. So a 180 minus 67 will give you an answer of 13. Wait, is that right? No, nope, 113. Okay, so we know that. Hold on. I think I did something wrong here. Wait, I made a mistake. So that happens to the best of us. Don't worry, guys. Hey, I got this. I got this. Okay? So, yeah, so. Oh, wait, hold on. I did make a mistake. So, two um, is 113, as we just found out and I erased it.
and I messed up again. Okay, and um, so now this right here is uh, wait, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, okay, and now can I move this? Okay, thank you. So we know that t uh, angle two is 113. And yeah, and uh, three is 67 degrees. And if we, this is also a supplementary angle. So if we add angle number uh, three, uh, which is 67 degrees and 45 degrees, we should we should be able to get one. So 67, 67 plus 45. That equals 112. Okay, and so if we subtract 112 from 180, you get an answer of 72 degrees. Nope, 62. 62 degrees. So we know that one, angle 1 is 62 degrees now. I'm brain dead. Okay, and angle, um, angle 1 and 40, this 45 right here. Those are um, vertical, vertical angles to angle two, and so we know that that we know that uh, one angle one plus forty five is one hundred twelve. So oh uh, two, wait, and it's on wrong. Oh, uh, we're fine. Never mind. <laughs> um, angle one and forty five are uh, complementary angles to angle four. And uh, that gives us, hold on, so if we add angle 145, that's 62 plus 45, which again gives us 112, hold on, oh, it's 45, sorry, my goodness, wait, I'm going brain dead, sorry. Um, 16245. That gives us. 107. That's what I thought. Okay. So angle 4 is 100, 107. I don't think I'm doing this right now. Shoot. <laughs> I can't do this. Um, 67. Uh, angle this right here is complementary to angle five, so angle five is sixty-seven degrees, and so this right here is also a supplementary angle. So if we add angle five, if we subtract one hundred angle five to one hundred eighty, and angle five is sixty-seven, that will give us. Oh, 103. So we know that ankle six, ankle six is 103. And type for number seven. And we know that five is 67 degree. Angle five is 67. And angle five and seven are both complement uh, vertical angles to each other. So angle seven is 67 degrees. There. Add its own wrong. All right, excellent. Yeah, something is wrong. I'm Good. Angle four is you guys got that. Angle four is uh, vertical with angle six, so that one should have been 113 degrees radical. And also, angles one and 45 degrees is vertical with angle two, so they need to add up to 113 degrees, right? So that was another one was uh, 180 minus the 112. I guess we could look at it that way too. That'd be um, 68. Right here, mm -hmm. which is angle one, sixty eight degrees. No, I can All right. Faster. Here we go. So, uh, what I'm going to do is focus on ankles, uh, the one ten ankle degrees, and then ankle five. Now, to do this, because we look at this and some of you guys kind of panic, which is unfortunate, but. If we split this up into separate, smaller problems, then hopefully it makes it a little bit easier for us. 
for example, if I look at that 110 degree ankle and then ankle five right here, then I can see it's just an intersection at a line so that the two ankles should add up to 180. So if I subtract them, then I see that ankle five is actually 70 degrees, which is good to know. And that may help me with the triangle inside there, right? So one ankle is 62 degrees, ankle 5 is 70 degrees. So if I wanted to solve for, that's ankle 6 right here, right there. Uh, all I need to do is take 180 and subtract those two. So yeah, 48 degrees on ankle 6. So we'll put that in. And uh, ankle 7, I mean, you could do the 180 minus the 48 degrees if you want. Some of you would just do 62 plus the 70. It doesn't really matter which way you do it, but we can solve it either way. I'm going to add the 2 because I like adding more than subtracting. So I got 62 plus the 70 degrees, which is 132 degrees for ankle 7. And that relationship, of course, was right account. So we have a few more ankles to look at. Uh, ankle 8 is vertical with ankle 5, so that one also would be 70 degrees, which is good. They did tell us that a, uh, the lines S and T were parallel, so that means that <clears throat> I got ankle 5 and 8, and an alternate interior ankle will be congruent, so ankle 1 also would be 70 degrees. And then alternate exterior ankles 3 and 8 should be... Uh, congruent as well. So 3 is 70 degrees also. So that becomes pretty nice because there wasn't really any calculating involved. <clears throat> but now there will be. Well, kind of. Ankle 2, I we can, can see. It. Ankle 2 is corresponding with ankle, the 110 degree ankle. So we know that one is 110 degrees. So now all we need to do is solve for ankle 4. And I'm going to relate it to the 110, because this whole thing would be 110, but we got the 62 degrees. So I need to subtract that from the 110, and that would just give me ankle 4. Just this one right account. So what the heck is that? 8 and the 1, 48 degrees. Oh, I guess I didn't notice that. Uh, another way to look at ankle 4 is this line. If we were to extend it and then ignore this garbage and this well, one you just erase that right out of there. and this one then we can see ankle four is alternate interior with ankle six which is why they have the same measure right there now let's revisit some of the following facts about similar triangles from chapter 11 about similarity Triangles that, have, that are similar have the following properties. If two triangles are similar, then the ratios of the lengths of the corresponding sides are the same. And if two triangles are similar, then corresponding angles have the same measure, automatic. So this is what we call a tessellation. Not that anyone really cares. But in Chapter 11, we learned that if one figure can be carried on to another by a series of rigid motions and dilations, then the two figures are similar. If it's some kind of transformation that's not a dilation, then they're congruent. In the picture above, triangle 1 is similar to triangle 2. Uh, we can kind of see that, right? They kind of um, colored the ankles for us. So I'm just showing those uh, three interior ankles for both those, color coding them just so we can see that they are the same, which means they're automatically at least similar, if not congruent, but we can see the sizes are different. In the picture above, triangle 1 is similar to triangle 2. Describe the sequence of transformations that will carry triangle 1 onto triangle 2. Also, what is the scale factor? All right, this one isn't too bad. If we were to go back and use this point as the center of dilation, right, then these would go through the same line, and so would these ones. And so this would be a dilation. And the scale factor on these, we can see that this is one length radical, and this is two lengths radical. So that is a scale factor, which equals two. Now that would take us from triangle one to triangle two. If they said triangle two to triangle one, 
then we would just reciprocate it and make it one half. But two will work for now. In the picture above, triangle two is similar to triangle three. Describe the sequence of transformations that will carry triangle two to triangle three, and what is the scale factor? So yeah, this one now is making the triangle smaller, and it appears that we will need two transformations on at these. So yeah, reflection wouldn't work because of the location of the ankles. For example, that green ankle right here has been kind of reversed, if you will. So, well, yeah, if, if you included a reflection, you would reflect it across a horizontal line, then rotate it and dilate it anyways, I guess. Now, it'd be translation and then rotation. Does that even work? I don't think that would work either. It'd be a little bit more involved. Wait, so just to, just to simplify it, we need just a rotation and dilation, that's all. We'll so, call it good with that. All right, what do you notice about the corresponding angles of similar triangles? They're all the same. Below is another fact about similar triangles. Given two triangles, if the corresponding angles have the same measure, then the triangles are similar. That's automatic. Complete the following statements. If two triangles have corresponding angles that are the same measure, then one triangle can be mapped onto the other using transformations. Therefore, the triangles are similar. Do all three pairs of corresponding angles have to be congruent in order to say that the two triangles are similar? The answer to that is a big fat no. 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 Wait, because yes, what if only two pairs of corresponding angles are congruent? Well, the answer to that is if only two corresponding angles are, con are congruent, then automatically the third pair is, which would make them similar. Are the triangles similar? If they are similar, we will justify why. Wait, are you talking about all? All right, so number four, this 114 degree would correspond with the D's, even though they're kind of uh, disoriented. And then this 29 degree corresponds with this one. So since those two are congruent, then this one automatically has to be the same. And we could calculate that if we wanted to. So 180 minus 114. And then minus 29, it would work for both. Uh, we could find the actual measure of that. So they'd both be 37 degrees. So the answer is yes, they are similar. All right, so number five. Here we got this 66 degree ankle, and this one is 66 degree. The problem is this 50 degree ankle is not the same as this 64 degree, which means we need to solve for the other missing angle in one of the two to see if it matches right 64 or 50. All right, so let's just check then. We got the 64 degree ankle it's just, and it's the 66 50. degree. It's 50. We're going to take that off of 180. And uh, yeah, that would give us 50 degrees right there, which is this ankle right here. Oh. Now, since that one's the same, that means that this one would have to be 64 degrees. So yes, they are similar. All right, number six, same idea as the last one. We got this 53 degree ankle, 34 degrees, and then these two 90 degree angles, which match, and that's okay. So let's figure out how much this one is right again. So we're going to take our 180 for all three ankles. We'll subtract the 90 degree ankle, and also the 34 degree ankle. And does it equal the same as 53 degrees? Because if it do not, then they are not similar. And as it turns out, that is 56 degrees, which is not the same as 53 degrees. So they are not similar. In the picture below, be sure to consider all three triangles. This one's like the other one that we did. No, 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 please. 
If this any the of the triangles are similar, are write a similarity yes. statement. Okay, so we will need a similarity statement on this one. Now there's three possible triangles. We just got to figure out if any of the three are actually similar, which we will now do. Good luck. Okay. First, we know that these are straight angles, which means that we have to do 180 minus 95, which equals 85. So now we know that this is 85. And this means, oh, and also to find D, we do 65 plus 95, which equals um, 107 D, so it equals 10. Wait a minute. Wait, so, oh yeah, 160, so it's actually 20. So this one's 20. And then, um, and so then to find 65, or to find angle A, or the rest of it, we do 65 plus 85. And that equals um, 150. And 180 minus 150 is 30. And so this one's 30. And so this triangle is not congruent to this triangle or this triangle out here. But this triangle and the, this triangle are the same because this is 95 together. And this is 65, and so, um, so 65, so if we just make a small version over here, 95, <laughs> <laughs> this is 95, this is 65, and this final angle right here, is once oops 20 and then once we make the new triangle um the small one oh it also you need to add degree signs to these So, um, this angle is 65, and this one's 95, and this one is 20, meaning that they are similar. All right. Thank you. That is correct. Now, the final thing it wanted us to do is to write the similarity statement. All right, so if I got this right, I'm going to try to color code this. We got triangle, hold on. So we have that triangle ADB. This one is similar to the smaller triangle, which we had, which would be um, A now corresponds with C. D is D, and B for that triangle corresponds with the vertex A. So this would be the similarity statement right here.
All right. <laughs> Number 12, the interesting thing about it, these is that this ankle has to be congruent to this one because they're vertical, which means, therefore, that since we have two ankles that are uh, corresponding ankles that are congruent, that the third one must also be congruent. So these ones are, yes, similar. All right, it may be helpful to split this one up into two triangles as well. We got the big one for the little one at the top, and then it also splits up into a big one where it was split right here. We don't want those. 